in this video, I'm going to show you how you can photograph your artwork with your phone. This is a really easy tutorial that'll work for all different types of art, whether you have a painting or work on paper. It will also work if you have indoor lighting or if you're trying to use a window for light. The first step in this process, of course, is your phone. I would suggest using the newest model of a phone that you have as possible. The thing is, is that the newer phones have better cameras inside of them, and so they can take a higher resolution image, which this will be more useful for you if you are trying to make art prints of your work and things like that, because you need a large image file to get really good zoomed in details. Now I have an iPhone 11 that I'm going to be showing you in this tutorial because my iPhone 15 I'm actually using to film the video, but an iPhone 11 is actually pretty good. One thing I would suggest if you are using an older version of the phone, do not take it with the camera on the front, take it with the camera on the back because the selfie cameras on the front are always lower resolution in the older cameras. Now the newer cameras, usually they have high resolution cameras in both sides of the phone, but for the older phones, definitely use these cameras on the back. The next thing to discuss are tripods. The thing is, is that when you're taking a photo with your camera, you need to have it mounted to a tripod first. That way you can set up the timer on the camera and when it's taking the photo, it won't have any wiggling or moving because if you're holding the camera yourself, you cannot hold it exactly still. There's just not going to be a way to do that. First step is to figure out where you are going to be placing your artwork to take the photograph. If you are photographing a work on paper, you can use a table like I have here and then a tripod mounted to either another table next to it or the same table. The main thing is you need a device to be able to hold your camera directly above your paper artwork. Also, just so you know, I've put a link in the description to all the things that I'm using in this video to take photographs. If you're needing to photograph a painting like the one back here, you can use your easel, but you can also use screws on a wall, which that's what I'm gonna show you in this tutorial today because not everybody has access to an easel and I wanted to make this video as applicable to as many different types of artists with as many different levels of supplies as possible. So as you can see back here, I have some screws in the wall already. You can see the lighting is kind of shadowy. It's not very good, but we're going to fix that here in a second because I'm going to show you exactly how to light your artwork to get the very best photo. So you can take your canvas and then stick it on top of the screws there like that, or you can have a nail on the wall and then just hang it on top of them. But I had two screws in the wall already like that, so I'm just balancing it on top of them either way, but you can hang it on the wall is the essential part of this. I wanna show you what I have over here. I have a tripod. This is for my phone to be able to take the photograph of the piece when it's on the wall. And then I also have this double ring light. I got this on Amazon, it's like 50 bucks. This is so awesome. It will really help out your lighting because you can get the lighting set up at equal distances apart. And this is the essential thing about lighting your artwork when you're trying to photograph it. Whether it's laying flat, or whether it's hanging on the wall. You need your lighting to be equal distance apart on equal sides at 45 degree angles if possible, but at least equal distances with nothing in front of there creating shadows because you want the lighting to be very even. You also wanna make sure that you're using white light, not yellow light, so either daylight bulbs or the daylight spectrum of light. These particular ring lights have settings on them where you can choose either a yellow light or a more white light. And most ring lights actually do that, but if you don't have ring lights, you don't need them. You can use floor lamps, any type of light you just want to make sure it's equal distances apart from your artwork. You can see here I have the ring lights set up on both sides and then the tripod directly in the middle in front of the artwork there. As you can see, the lighting looks very even. Now, if I have my hand in front of there, I'm making shadows. So you, that's why you want to make sure you don't have anything in front of the lights. And this is in between the lights, so it's also not creating a shadow. So then what we do is mount our camera in here and you wanna square up the image as much as possible. If it has wonky dimensions in here, it's not going to turn out right for prints and things like that that you need to make. So basically you maneuver the phone around until it is exactly lined up. You can see here, see if I have it like that, I'll bring it up a little more. You see how this top part is thinner over here and this part is thicker? That is bad, it's what you don't want. So we're gonna bring it back down again and get it at the right angle. And one rule of thumb for this, so there's a lot of adjustments very gently, especially if you have kind of a wobbly tripod like I do. But the rule of thumb is, is that you want the camera that you're taking it with to be 
parallel with the angle at which this is sitting against the wall. So if this is straight up and down, this camera needs to be straight up and down. Same thing if you're photographing artwork on paper, you need to have the camera parallel to the paper. And this is why you need the tripod to hold it up here. You wanna be able to square it up just like if you were photographing on the wall. Now I wanna show you a nifty little trick with a piece of foam board. If you are photographing near a window or you only have one light, you can use the foam board to act as your bounce or your second light to be able to create a more even lighting over your artwork. You can see how this image has white over here, but this part has more shadow. But if you go like this and you put this foam board in here, I have a light shining in from this direction. It is bouncing it off. You can see now that the image is a lot more evenly exposed. Using the foam board as a bounce is also really important if you decide to photograph your artwork next to a window rather than having lights set up like in a studio, for example. And a lot of times artists like to use natural light from a window because it does make your colors look really nice, but it's hard to get the lighting even. But you can use the foam board as a bounce to help reflect some of that light coming in from the window to help you get a more even lighting. Also, one other tip is to take multiple photographs of your work. And don't forget when you're taking your photo, make sure to use the timer because this way, when you touch your phone, it will have time to really solidly be in a very still position because the more still your phone is, the crisper the photo is going to be. And if you're gonna make prints or anything with these photos, you want them to be very detailed and crisp. I'm gonna show you on my iPhone here. You can see there is a timer. Let's go ahead and do three seconds. I'm just gonna count down and now we'll take the photo. This will give you a crisper photo than just pushing this without the timer on. If you found this tutorial helpful, I have an entire playlist on how to make art prints. It goes really in depth. It will show you how to make beautiful prints of your artwork. Watch it here. All right, thank you so much for watching. See you next time.